I was trained by one of the fathers of geriatrics in the United States. His name is Bill Hazard. And he was always asking me this question, Wes, what about the old people coming down the track that are going to fill up hospitals around the world? And the more he asked me that question, the more my lens began to focus really around the older patients who receive critical care because I'm an intensivist and take care of people who are suffering from life-threatening sorts of illnesses and receiving life support in an intensive care unit. I began to realize that when they came back to our clinics, they weren't really suffering from the same thing that had gotten them into the ICU. What gets them into the ICU is generally a problem of their heart or lungs. But when they were coming back to clinic, what they were left with was a neck up problem, essentially an acquired dementia, if you will. We began to ask ourselves as physician scientists, are we doing anything that's causing that? Sometimes I just forget my list at home. One of the things that we found is that there is a striking relationship between the quantity of sedatives that a patient gets and how much brain dysfunction they experience. So if that's the case, then I started surmising, what if we really reduce how much of these drugs we give? And so we set up a study, and we got funding for this study to do a multicenter investigation where we called this the ABC approach, or the Awakening Breathing Control Trial. Bob, can you open your eyes for me? This is Allison again. I'm just bugging you. I just want you to wake up and breathe. Okay. What we essentially were doing is waking patients up, seeing if they could breathe, and then liberating them from this life support. So half the patients got a standard approach where their drugs were targeted to the exact level that the doctors and nurses thought they should be. And the other half got that targeting. So the doctors and nurses did what they thought was just the right amount. But on top of that, we overlaid a mandatory rule that as long as some safety criteria were met, we stopped the drugs cold every day. And at first, everybody was pretty shocked by the notion of that because they thought if you totally shut these drugs off, it might be like pulling the tablecloth out you know, from underneath these patients. But it turned out at the end of the day that we cut the drugs by 50% and there was no increase in pain or bad dreams or awareness of bad memories. And yet, despite none of those problems, we found a huge difference in length of stay and death rates. The length of stay was four days less in the ICU but in addition, the patients were less likely to die by 15%. That's a huge difference. My college roommate, who went on to become president of Doctors Without Borders, we both decided that we would try and do things to improve the lives of people we'd never meet. And it, it sounds kind of hokey, and we used to not tell anybody because we thought it might be kind of embarrassing. But really, that is essentially what medical research is. You're trying to do things to improve the lives of people you'll never meet. And I am, just enjoy the notion of that.